welcome to the news. My name is Shalom Lawson. 32 years after independence, Zimbabwe is still grappling with many challenges ranging from economic hardships, dilapidated infrastructure to unemployment. Crispin Tabura speaks to some Zimbabweans about their expectations. On April 18, Zimbabwe commemorated 32 years of independence from British colonial rule amid calls for government to improve the economy, infrastructure and create more jobs. While some Zimbabweans participated in national events to mark independence, others went on with their day-to-day -day business. ATV spoke to some people in Arari and Tungiza to hear their views about independence. <laughs> Some people were pessimistic. They said 32 years of independence had not brought any joy to them. Unemployment estimated to be more than 60% is of major concern to the majority of the poor. While Zimbabwe may have gained political independence over three decades ago, the country is still battling with economic and social challenges. Most of the infrastructure inherited from the colonial government has since disintegrated. Both central and local government have come under sharp criticism from the public for failing to improve service delivery. Most roads are in bad shape and have become dead straps. The gap between the rich and the poor is also widening, with the majority of poor struggling to survive. The celebration of more than three decades of independence has brought mixed feelings, with some trumpeting the successes made and others complaining bitterly over poor service delivery. I am Christian Tabra, reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's roads have become death traps, killing hundreds of people every year. A recent accident that claimed 21 lives along Mashingo Bight Bridge Highway sparked outrage among Zimbabweans. Mochaneta Chimoka gives us the report. The recent bus accident that claimed 21 lives along the Mashingo Bait Bridge Highway has raised concerns about the safety of Zimbabwe's roads. People who spoke to ATV recently attributed the high rate of accidents to bad roads, speeding and reckless driving, as well as failure by motorists to observe safety rules. South Africa, you are entering a high accident zone, a alert zone, you drive and go cautious, you can go in the area. But if you go to the area, you can go to the area. But the caramba is not blame about my bus. It's not my driver. We may just get to something. We got to do this. We got to go away. Oh, so no caramba is going to risk more accidents. Other travelers complained about drunk and driving. So now, no one could tell me that we are going to zero. We are over speed. We are going to drive. We are going to walk down the car. We are going to go to my bus. We are going to go to my bus. We are going to go to Travelers complained about some unscrupulous bus operators overworking their drivers to maximize profits while risking people's lives. Others blame the police for receiving bribes from motorists. We are going to go to the hospital. 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 We are going to go to the h
Meanwhile, a total number of 293 accidents were recorded nationally during the Easter holiday, killing 49 people, while last year 43 lives were lost in 289 accidents. Lack of resources and equipment by fire department has also aided the wars. Most towns in Zimbabwe have poorly equipped disaster reaction teams. More and more lives will continue to be lost on Zimbabwe's roads if no action is taken soon to address the problems. Mchanita Chimuka reporting for ATV. Many Zimbabweans are increasingly turning to foreign herbal medicine to cure various ailments while shunning conventional medicine. Robert Tafumane reports. Foreign herbal medicines are fast gaining popularity in Zimbabwe with some people opting to use the herbs instead of conventional medicines to cure different ailments. Most of these herbs, which are imported from countries such as China and Egypt, claim to cure diseases such as tuberculosis, hypertension, asthma, cancer and even HIV-related ailments. The most popular ones are Tianche, Green World and Forever Living products. Sihe Gumbo, senior manager at Forever Living, said their products are made from natural remedies grown without any herbicide. For me to have now a clear skin, I've used uh, the liquid soap and the propolis cream. I found that when I used this, they cleared up the skin and now I have a smooth skin. And I always wonder to say, if I had not used these products, how long it would have taken my skin to be back and nice and smooth as it is right now. Ruth and Yuda said she started using the herbs some three months ago and they are making her skin look healthier. Richard Rukwata of Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe said none of these products were registered. To be um, very frank on the matter, we have not approved any herbal remedies or complementary medicines that actually purport to cure anything. Most of these substances have actually been um, distributed on the understanding that they are just general health supplements without any specific um, curative claims. So to the knowledge of the authority, there are no herbal products on the market that actually cure diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, or any of a number of uh, um, ethical conditions which would require medical expertise. He added that there was no scientific evidence to show that these herbs were effective. And in most cases what we actually do is uh, we endorse that med uh, herbal medicines are not registrable. And this is after an assessment of um, um, the labeling requirements as I've said because we actually have labeling requirements for medicines in statutory instrument 150 of 1991 which are very specific to say if this medicine purports to cure A, B, C certain requirements must be met. Now with respect to herbal products currently um, none of them um, or very few of them actually have any um, proof of efficacy. So we don't know um, whether or not these substances actually cure what they claim to cure. To the public, the whole issue around herbal and conventional medicines is like a double-edged sword. On one hand, the peddling of imported and unauthorized herbal medicines poses serious public health risks. On the other hand, the high cost of drugs, the dispensing of expired drugs in some public health institutions also puts the lives of the poor at risk. Robert Afumane reporting for ATV, Arare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.